Hello and welcome to the sixth episode of Kerbal Space Endeavor. We have a new mission that is we are going to get a rover to the moon. So as I said before, I have a rule set up that we need to send probes to planets before we have manned missions to go there. And now try to pay attention to what is happening right about there. Wait, there it is. So something exploded. The thing is, I don't know why it exploded and how it exploded, but remember that there is an explosion because it will become more important later. However, here we get out of the atmosphere and start our normal orbiting maneuvers and get ourselves into a position and set ourselves up with a maneuver and then just accelerate and thrust to get towards the moon. We set up our satellites to have, well the antennas to have a connection and once we go towards the moon we do so like we go not into an orbit and then descend towards it. We're just crashing right as fast as we can towards it. I did miscalculate a little bit on the delta V. I brought way, way, way too much delta V with me. So here you see me descending towards the planet with the actual main engine. And as you can see on top there, I built a little craft that was supposed to slow our descent, then decouple and the lander should just land safely. But I brought so much power with me that I was able to land just on the bottom of the rocket right there. So we have a successful landing and now we can just um, oh yeah we get some money for being finally able to land on the moon and um, yeah now it is just time to decouple right there and as you can see with the power of the mo um what is it called um ah come on i i i don't know um just ah torque that's the word i'm looking for torque so with the power of torque i was able to uh spin the craft around and this was actually supposed to break our landing for the lander but now it is just sitting here a uh, working little probe that can fly places. I'm just gonna leave this here because um, I might need it one day or I don't. Well, we'll see. However, let's unfold these panels and then let's figure out what I misjudged again. Okay, and this drill right here is only working on atmospheric planets. Well, that is good to know. Um, great. Well, let's see if we can laser stuff. Can we laser stuff? At least we can laser stuff. The Mooner regolith in this region has high concentration of silicate compounds. And let's transmit that data. And let's take a quick look at the map. We are in the highlands. And maybe we can get into one of these craters. Now, do you remember we saw something exploding when we got, uh, when we were trying to launch? And what was exploding is a little tool from Scanset, which is called uh, the map thing, which allows me on pro bodies to open this map. So I don't know where my little rover is, and I can't see him on the map. So um, I did kind of an estimate and looked around. And uh, here we're just changing it to a landing site so we know later on what it is. And um, yeah, so we decide it is best to go in that one direction to that one crater that supposedly, due to scans, it tells me it will be um, a new biome where we could collect more science. So here we're just checking where we should go. I was actually trying to go to this big crater right there. 
and I know it is far away and I thought, sure, why not, let's try it. I hope in future KSP updates or something they're gonna introduce a certain um, automatic system where you can like tell um, probes on surfaces to drive to certain areas if you constructed it the right way because otherwise driving there will take a long long time. So we're just gonna skip ahead and as you can see we're 9.4 kilometers away to a crater which supposedly is a new biome. So um, we're gonna just gonna check everything and um, yeah so one thing of a problem I ran into I could not uh, well I actually I because of the low gravity I jumped over a little edge and I lost both of my solar panels here so yeah um, this rover therefore will run out of power fairly soon as you see in the top right corner of the screen so I said okay let's screw it let's just get down this hill as fast as we can and maybe we can still get some science however <sighs> once again I promised I'm the guy who fracks things up and of course I do here we go for a bounce and we twist and turn and fall over and break off our antenna we therefore lose connection break off more stuff and now this wonderful rover which we named Maximus for some apparent reason is sliding on its back and from now on completely useless and we're just gonna rename it to debris um, so yeah, the first uh, rover mission to the moon was had a successful landing. It did transfer some information back. Three of its um, scientific equipment did not work as intended. And um, yeah, in the end we die crashing into a crater on the moon. But now let's move on. So this is the Minmus Express, which will deliver a satellite system to Minmus, and let's launch. If you remember, the first satellite network that we sent to the moon was just uh, four probes that then were distributed over um, in an orbit around the moon. This time we actually took uh, not only those four probes, but there's also a surveyor in the middle. So we will have to get into a polar orbit, and then when we have reached the polar orbit, uh, we're going to detach the surveyor and get all of the uh, four probes, which will work as communication satellites, into a normal equatorial orbit. So here we have it revealed and I installed some very very nice blue lights which give this a really cool shimmer. Now we need to activate the satellite antennas so we don't lose connection because this is an entirely unmanned mission of course. And um, yeah, we'll just get out these panels as well so we do not run out of power because that would be rather embarrassing if it would be. All of this is of course once again done in time acceleration because orbital maneuvers take quite some time and I just think they're boring to watch. So with a little bit of adjustment of our our maneuver right there, there we go, um, we get ourselves already into a polar orbit right there. So that was really convenient that I got that from the beginning and I didn't have to muck around too much. So just setting up alarm, alarm clock so I don't skip my maneuver notes because I seem always seem to do that. And we do know that the surveyor works best at one point... No, it was 250 kilometers, 250 kilometers. Okay, so here we're fast forwarded and we are already in a orbit of 250 kilometers, a polar orbit, and now we're just setting up our satellites to be directed towards Kerbin, so we will 
always have a connection no matter if a satellite is behind Minmus or not. So all of these, as you've seen before in the previous videos where we set up the other uh, satellite networks, is that we, there we go, we have to switch now to our main satellites over Kerbin and change the setting on these here as well. And if the loading screen was a little bit faster, this would be much more interesting. <laughs> All right, here we go. So we have one satellite, which is directed at SATCOM 1, and we have a second satellite, which is directed towards SATCOM 2. Now, this satellite here is directed towards the moon, which gives a connection wherever it is. And this one here, we're going direct towards Minmus. Yes, there we go. And we're gonna do that for all of the other two SATCOMs around Kerbin. As you can see right here, the cones connect and we have a connection at Minmus. And we're doing it for the other SATCOMs as well. Now, here let's get back to the separation stage. Um, one thing though, as you see here in the video, the middle here is already missing. So the surveyor that was here in the middle um, somehow when I was recording this it kind of had an error and it didn't record that part so I'm sorry that this is missing but here you have a really really nice shot of these three satellites already leaving I'm leaving the last one on the craft because otherwise I would have no control over the drive section so what I'm doing is I'm using RCS to get um, the drive section into an unstable orbit so therefore it will crash onto Minmus and we will not have a space debris flying around that could actually come back one day and bite us in the hours. So once we reach an unstable orbit we detach and then switch back to the craft, fold these solar panels in and this time I was smart enough to, uh, okay, we still have to direct this towards Minmus. There we go. So we will have connection in Minmus. And there we go. I remember to put in action groups. And all of these solar panels unfold at the same time. I must say these probes look really nice. And they're pretty cool. But as you can see, something here happened. And suddenly my UI was gone. And if that happens to you, the only way you can fix it at the moment is quick saving and quickly uh, reloading. As you can see right here, my nav ball and all the other things are back, which is, well, I need them. <laughs> and somehow, somewhere, I thought I put the um, pro body on the wrong way. So I was flying the wrong direction, but then when I hit it, it actually worked again when I set it as a uh, control from here. Um, but yeah, uh, I figured it out. We got away when we're not crashing towards the planet. Now it is just uh, time again to put ourselves in the correct orbit and we want to be in... what did I, did I put it? Yeah, 250 kilometer orbit. And uh, now we're just setting up all of the other um, satellites to be exactly 90 degrees off the next satellite. So we have four satellites around Minmus instead of just three as we have over Carbon. But we should have enough coverage for that to have complete uh, connection wherever we will be in Minmus. Minmus is very small so it doesn't um, matter too much if we have certain loss of connection somewhere because Minmus rotates so freaking fast that even if we lose connection for a short second we will have a uh, next satellite coming up for more connection. So yeah this is just normal maneuvering as you've seen in the other satellite missions if you want to go faster you need to go into a lower orbit if you want to go slower you go into a higher orbit and so forth and so forth um, there's a lot of tutorial videos if you don't know how to do any of this 
I don't think I will do a tutorial video because I'm not really good at doing any of these. I just, I don't know, I just recently figured a lot of stuff out for myself, like how the directing certain satellites with a, vi uh, a wide f uh, field of range to work so you don't need to connect every single antenna by itself and yeah so I mean I'm not new to the game but I'm also not an expert I'm just kinda messing around recording it and hoping that I can entertain a few folks out there okay and I think this is the last one already yeah this is SATCOM 4 and um, yeah, we all on one of these satellites we have two. It is not necessary to, to have two, but I have two omnidirectional antennas on there with a range of 500 kilometers. So with a 250 kilometer uh, height towards the planet, we have a connection to not only all of the s uh, satellites that are to the left and to the right of us, but we also have connection towards the surface. On top of that, I put one of the bigger dishes that has that wild, uh, f that wide field of connection. And as you can see here, all of them are connected. They're all pointed towards Kerbin. And yeah, there it is. There you see the cones that I wanted to mention, the field cones of view or whatever they are with the antennas. So we have complete cover. And the Servier one, which is in an orbit, uh, polar orbit around Kerbin right there. Yes, right there. We're gonna switch to it. Um, is also pointed towards Kerbin. So we have an additional connection. And we are already starting to map the planet with better resolution than we did on our first server, which was around Kerbin. So yeah, we have completed a rover mission, we have completed a satellite network for Minmus, so nothing stands in our way for more rover missions, this time on Minmus though. Thank you guys for watching, my name's Antilles.